Hey guys, welcome back to the Timber Forge. Today I have a pretty simple but also useful tutorial about how to create timers, delays, and command sequences by using commands inside of a data pack or using command blocks. I do recommend that you use a data pack though, and if you don't know how to create a data pack, make sure to check out more information down in the description below. Now before I go over the different ways that you could create timers and delays, I first want to go over the schedule command which you could use to create some very simple delays. So the schedule command, the main thing to know about it is that there's two modes. So you have schedule and then clear you could do to clear any schedules that you have already created, but I'm not going to go into that because it's pretty self-explanatory. So schedule function and you pick the name of the function. So for me, I have timers and I have global single. This is literally just a say command. So if you go check it, it's literally just say global single. And the reason you need a function is just because that's how the schedule command works. You can't schedule individual commands, only entire functions. So back inside of Minecraft, if I schedule a function, which just leads to a say command, I can choose the amount of time. So I could do days, seconds, or ticks. And if you remember, 20 ticks makes one second in terms of command ticks. So let's say I want uh, three seconds. I'll do three seconds. And then you have append or replace. Basically, append creates a new timer every single time you run the command. And I run this three times. You'll notice it says global single three times because it ran three independent timers. It's kind of like if you were to run this redstone example. If I press the button and then I press the button again, you'll notice it goes on twice since it's two separate timers. Now, on the other hand, if you do replace and I run this three times, you'll notice that it only runs the command once. And that's because it's removing any previous timers that were going for this specific function. It replaces them with the new one. And to go with the redstone analogy, replace would be like if I press the button, but then I press the button again, it would delete the old timer and activate a new timer. So as you saw, the first way to create a command delay is to just use a schedule function command, but this also has some limits, which I'll go into after this. But I also want to show you how to create a scheduling function that repeats constantly as soon as you load the data pack. And to do that, you want to create a new function, which you'll be using for the repeating whatever you're trying to do. And inside of there, you'll basically have it schedule itself. So you do schedule function and then just link it to the function that this is inside of. And then put your delay and put replace. And I'll show you why you need to do replace. Then inside of the function, just put whatever you want to repeat. For me, I'm just going to use a say command since that's a simple example. So if I go into Minecraft and reload, you'll notice that it won't actually be working. And the reason for that is the function has to schedule itself, but in order to schedule itself, it has to run in the first place. So all you have to do is go into the load command and make sure to run the function there. So if I do function timers global repeat, then when I reload the data pack, it's going to run that the first time and then it's going to keep repeating itself. And now the reason that I needed to use replace is because this function is going to be run every single time that you reload the data pack. So if I didn't do replace, this would no longer run only once every second since it would create new timers every time I reload the data pack. By putting replace, I make sure that there's only one timer running at all times. Now, even though the schedule function command is super easy to implement, it's also very limiting since you can't have separate and independent timers for different entities. So, for example, with a normal command, if I were to do execute as at s run function timers global single, which is just the say command, and I were to run that, you'll notice that it says timberforge global single because I was running the command, so I said global single. Now, it works differently if I were to run a schedule command. So execute as at s run schedule function, and then I'll put a delay of one second. If I were to run that, you'll notice that the server says global single, not me, even though I specified I'm executing as myself. And that's one of the limitations of the schedule function is that you can't specify per entity or basically change any information about where or who is running the function. That means, for example, if I wanted creepers to have separate delays for their explosions, like a custom creeper mob, I wouldn't be able to use the schedule function command to give those creepers separate delays. What the schedule command is useful for is for any types of delays or timers that run over your entire uh, data pack. So, for example, if you had a custom mob and it attempts to spawn and replace a certain amount of mobs every like 10 seconds or so, 
that's where you could use the schedule function command. And another limitation is that you can't really change the length of the schedule. Once you schedule it, it's set for that length. You can cut it off early, but you can't really extend the schedule function or anything like that. A method of creating timers and delays which gives you a lot more flexibility and control is by using scoreboards. So to start off, you have to create the actual scoreboard objective, obviously. So in your load function, do scoreboard objectives add and then name it whatever you want and then just put dummy afterwards, which indicates that only commands are going to manipulate the scoreboard. And how it's going to work is that we're going to be using a command to set our score to a certain number. And if it's above zero, that'll indicate to our other commands that it should start counting down all the way down to zero. And right before it hits zero, it'll detect that and run whatever function that we want. So right now it's up at 40 and we want it to count down. Now in your loop function, or what you probably should do is be running a separate function from your loop function. But for the sake of example, I'm just gonna be putting it in the loop function. So you first want to have it count down. So scoreboard players remove, and then you put the entities that you want to remove the score from. And it says players, but if you're new to the scoreboard command, that doesn't actually mean that only players could do it. Basically any entity could have a scoreboard. So scoreboard players remove any entities that have a score for your timer, that timer name that you set over one. That's what the dot dot means. It means one or more. So if you have greater than zero score, then it will remove one from your timer one objective. What will happen is that it'll count down to zero. So anytime I set it to 40, it's gonna count back down to zero and it'll stop. Or if I set it to 60 or whatever. And as you can see, this will give you a lot more control over the length of your delay. So let's say it's 60, but then you want to reset it in the middle. You could also do that. But now let's say you want it to actually do something, obviously. What you have to do is just detect if your scoreboard has counted all the way down or not. So I do execute as all entities that have a score of exactly one. Then I will go to the position of that entity and run my function timer one result, which is literally just a say command. And the reason I did one is because it's going to count down to zero. So once it hits zero, it's going to stay at zero. And I don't want this to repeat while it's at zero. So I just did it at one. You could also make it count up if you want, but I find that it's easier to understand the change in length if you make it count down, since you'll always know it's gonna execute at one. And also you don't need it to only run at one. You could make it run at any point along the sequence. You could have certain commands that run halfway through or a third of the way through or a quarter of the way through all just by changing which number. So I could set this to run at 10 and then I could maybe set another one to run at 20 or something like that. So if I go into my Minecraft right now, you'll notice anytime I set my score above zero, it's going to count down and it's gonna execute right when the timer runs out. And as you can see, it's actually running as myself. So I'm able to do it for multiple entities. If I had three creepers here, I could have three creepers with their own different timer score. And if you want your scoreboard timer to constantly repeat and not just do a single delay, then just make sure to go to your function that runs after your timer runs out and make sure that it resets itself. So if you're counting down, what you want to do is make sure to do scoreboard players set at S because that's probably who's running the function. And then your timer one or whatever, and then set the score to whatever you want the delay to be. This way, as soon as your timer runs out, it'll run your function, run your results, and also it'll reset your timer so it'll continue going. And to make sure that it starts the first time, you just have to make sure that somewhere you manually set the score to your high number. So that could be when you summon the custom mob, for example, if you're doing a custom mob. Or let's say you're going to have a mob that flashes or something once it starts attacking, then you would want to set the score as soon as it starts attacking. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more data pack content. If you have any feedback or suggestions for future tutorial videos, make sure to leave a comment down in the description below.